One of my favorite summertime comfort foods. To me, Chicken Marsala toes the line between quick weeknight meal and fancy date night meal, especially when you put it over pasta like we're doing here. I always feel like I have to disclaim that I'm not boasting authenticity here. This is just a dish I like to eat based on the traditional chicken marsala recipes that I've seen. To start off, I'm using about a half a pound of chicken breast per person, which is roughly a chicken breast cut in half lengthwise. I keep tons of these chicken cutlets in my freezer because they're so versatile. I also use them to make my lower calorie chicken alfredo recipe, which you should check out if you haven't yet. But I freeze them already pounded thin so that they defrost quickly. You're also welcome to use chicken thighs here, but I actually prefer the taste of chicken breast in applications like this, or like chicken parmesan or chicken alfredo. As long as you cook them correctly, they won't dry out, and they have the added bonus of being lower in fat and healthier. I'm just seasoning sort of conservatively with salt and pepper. I don't want to go too heavy like a steak because this is not very thick. And then commonly with chicken marsala recipes, you coat both sides with flour. This gives us a more palatable sear in my opinion, and it's also going to thicken up the sauce and give it a nice texture. So I have a pan going on medium heat that I'm adding a good bit of olive oil and about a half tablespoon to a tablespoon of butter per person. Nope, not like that. The pan is too hot and the butter is browned instantly, so let's wipe it out and start over. Okay, much better. Once the butter's all melted, we can begin to sear our chicken. I initially do about two minutes per side to get a good sear, and then I just start flipping sort of constantly until I reach that internal temperature that I want. Which for chicken breast, I pull mine between 155 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit to let it carry over cook to that 165 on its own. You can rest that on the side while we put together our sauce, which I'm starting with a couple tablespoons of finely chopped onion. You can use shallot if you're doing small portions, or if you live in New Orleans and it's crawfish season, you can find these boiler onions at most grocery stores, which I find awesome for small portions. Then I'm gonna go in with about two ounces or 60 grams of serving of sliced mushroom. I'm using baby bellas here, but you can use cremini or shiitake or white mushroom, whatever you have. I'm gonna stir those around and try to get those coated with some fawn from the bottom. After about three to five minutes, they should have softened and absorbed a good bit of flavor. So I'm gonna give it a little more olive oil before putting in one to two cloves of minced garlic. We put the garlic in after the onions and mushrooms because it has the highest tendency of burning. Stir that around to get it fragrant. It shouldn't need any more than 30 to 60 seconds. And we're gonna go in with the title ingredient, which is the Marsala wine. Just like I said, when I use this to make my cannoli video, there is no real substitute for a Marsala wine. It has a distinct flavor, which is noticeable in the dishes it's meant to be a part of. That being said, you can probably get away with using just a generic white wine here, but I would definitely go for the Marsala if you can find it. I'd say I'm using about a quarter to a half a cup per serving, and I'm just using it to deglaze the fond off the bottom of the pan. So make sure you scrape off all those good flavor bits off the bottom. Then I'm going in with about equal parts of chicken stock, or in my case, I'm just using water and some of this bouillon paste. This step is optional, but I already had some fresh thyme, so I'm plucking off a few stems worth of leaves and putting them in to bloom in the sauce. I just love the flavor of thyme. Then I'm just going to stir everything together and let this sauce boil and reduce for a few minutes. I want a good bit of the water to evaporate so the sauce can thicken up and concentrate in flavor. And here's where you want to adjust salt to taste. This is a very important step in home cooking, especially with pan sauces like this. Once it's thickened to my liking, I'm going to introduce the chicken breast back to the pan. I'm going to turn it a few times to get it well coated in the sauce. And then I'm going to cover it with a lid and let the steam heat the chicken back through so it's not cold when we're eating it. I gave mine about four minutes. I should note here that I made a critical error and forgot to add the heavy cream to the sauce. That would have made it so much creamier and richer, but as I show you here, it's not the end of the world. And it's actually going to be a little healthier this way. But regardless, I'm going to remove the chicken for a minute so that I can add in three ounces or about 85 grams of boiled pasta. I'm using fettuccine in this case, and I also reserved a bit of the pasta water to help emulsify the sauce if needed, which in my case, it was needed. So I'm adding that in and tossing everything together until it's nice and cohesive. Okay, finally, to serve, we're going to twirl the pasta onto a plate, and then we're going to add our beautiful chicken breast on top, followed by the rest of that glorious sauce. To finish up, I'm just going to garnish with a handful of chopped Italian parsley, as well as some grated Parmigiano-Reggiano. See, you can't even tell that I forgot to put the heavy cream in here. To me, that looks like something I'd be satisfied with at an Italian restaurant, so let's dig in and see if it's worth it. How exciting. Something like this is very easy to whip up on a weeknight, and you can also scale it up if you have a bigger family, but I tend to like to make things fresh for myself so I don't meal prep a lot. Something as simple as this I can do every time when I want to eat it. Let's cut into this perfectly cooked chicken. For every chicken dish, the temperature is so important to getting a flavorful final product. Try to get a little bit of everything on the first bite. Cheers. Like I said, it's the perfect lighter comfort food. It would definitely taste better with the heavy cream and I would add it next time, but it does turn out to be a little healthier without it. And I don't think the flavor is lacking by any means. That's why it's so important to salt your food to taste at the end of the cooking process. 
Yeah, that Marsala wine adds such a distinct flavor that you don't get anywhere else unless you use it in a recipe. And mushrooms are always great in something like this. I love the touch of the flour on the chicken that helps to bond together the whole sauce. But this is also something you should be able to eat and not feel terrible afterwards. All I can say is Italy has done it yet again. They never miss. But hopefully this small video can give at least one person motivation to make something like this, even if it's not my recipe, but something you find online. They're all very similar. But as always, thank you all for watching and I'll see y'all next time.